you might identify as having been a lapse. But I'll say that even when I was in the private sector, when, when there wasn't money at uh, the levels higher up, I had to, my budget had to reflect accordingly. And I think the idea to say that things would be washed because they've moved it around and that there should be this expectation that we should have a net zero, uh, there will be a net zero and we should keep everything level, we've got to identify that the current situation we're in means that there's not money for that. And so as much as it's not, we're not being mean here by saying that uh, a, a particular department needs to deal with less money, it's the reality of where we fall. I had to deal with that. I had multiple times where they came to me and said, you're going to have to manage on less. And so, I, so if there is additional money, or if we've had to take from another place uh, to put it into, uh, um, or we've had to kind of move it around like it has been indicated, um, I don't see that us going to them and still asking them to be more effective and efficient and find ways because we don't have the money is somehow a, a negative thing. I think that's what we should be doing in light of where we are. But I also think that if there has been an identified lapsed money, instead of just arguing against the representative, how about offer the, a, 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 a conceptual amendment to change it to more of what you think your numbers are, and let's work with the representative instead, just, uh, instead of just uh, uh, opposing her in the efforts that she's made to do exactly what I think the public wants us to do, and that is to recognize and control government in a time when we don't have the money. Ortiz. The net impact of this is still, is my understanding, that we have a fish and game that is the best, uh, man they manage to manage our fisheries to the, in the best uh, level around the world. That's, that's the net result. Um, so the, the results speak for themselves. So as we move forward with these amendments, you know, yeah, we'd like to be able to to step down and to micromanage and to get down to the very brass tack levels of, of these $17,000 or these $18,000. But that's, you know, we're not in, we're not that knowledgeable about this kind of stuff. I mean, I just think we have to, when we make the allocation to the division, to the department, there has to be a certain acknowledgement that, uh, yeah, they've been given a reduction, they're gonna be forced to deal with this, and they have, um, but at a certain level, there's things that, you know, we can't do at the legislative level to go down and say, well, they need this particular building in Western Region Fisheries Management, or they don't need this building, or they don't need the monies for this building. How do we know? Um, so, with that said, I'm not going to say anything more as we move forward with these amendments. Well, I'm not going to go home and say we don't have the knowledge. That's not why my constituents sent me here. They sent me here to work hard into the details. I believe in the flexibility, as the co-chair has said. But I guess the extent has to be how much flexibility? 100,000, 200,000, a million? We are responsible as, as in this, we have the department up. The department didn't say we're building a building. Again, that should be in the capital. Or in 17, the reason we only used $26,000 is because this happened and this is what we're anticipating to happen this year. That didn't come from the department. That detail didn't come up. We're talking about UGF has been decreased. Absolutely, UGF has been decreased. But let me remind you again, as we did yesterday, DGF has increased. Pittman-Robertson Fund has increased. We're looking to even get more in an amendment that's going to be coming um, before us to hopefully be able to get more of it and not have to return any of that. Um, fish tax changes, because I'm pretty sure fish tax is um, based on the commercial industry and how well they do. So that's something that wouldn't stay consistent and would affect UGF. We are at a point right now, and I, and I think I even heard it this morning in a, in a press conference, um, on what our decisions are as far as bringing a budget forward, and how are we going to fill the gap. And for me, the first thing is, is I have to know that we're trying to be as responsible as we possibly can with the money. Just because we spent it the year before doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to be spent this year. I gave flexibility in DFG9. They asked for 227000 I left 127200 in it. And I didn't even hear anything from the department why they needed the 127000 but because I believe that there has to be flexibility, but every year they need to be adjusted. Because if we're not going to do that, Mr. Chairman, then there's no reason to even have these details. We should just have a couple pages that shows personnel, travel, services, commodities, and yet to be determined cost because that seems to flow into this one as well. 
if that's the only thing here at the legislature we're going to be responsible for. But that's not what I was put here. I was put here to do the hard work, work put out in details what's happening so that the public knows where their PFD funds are going to. Thank you. And Inspector Colerol on Amendment DFT9. Representative Pruitt. Yes. Representative Thompson. Yes. Representative Tilton. Yes. Representative Wilson. Yes. Representative Garrett. No. Representative Grant. No. Representative Guttenberg. No. Representative Kawasaki. No. Representative Ortez. No. Representative Seaton. No. Representative Foster. No. Four yay, seven nay. So the vote, four in favor and seven opposed, uh, DFG 9 fails to be adopted. Um, we are now on DFG.